So just to describe Farmers Telecommunications a little bit, we're a small cooperative that serves roughly about 20,000 people in the northeast corner of Alabama. 12,000 of those are broadband customers. We, to talk a little bit about our network configuration, we're providing Ethernet services to several large businesses in our, our area, as well as gigabit internet service to our customers. Um, we have two flavors of internet service for residential customers, 100 meg and one gig, so we've really tried to simplify that. To provide uh, 100 meg and one gig services to our customers, we're mostly fiber. The uh, board and the general manager came together uh, eight or nine years ago and, and formulated a plan to provide fiber penetration to our entire customer base. And at this point, we're 92% complete with that. So most of our customers are covered by fiber. The type of equipment that we're using to provide broadband service is really the the legacy B6 gear from Calix, Active Ethernet, and recently in the past couple of months we've decided to make the switch to AXOS and to GPON at the same time. So we're, we're learning a couple of new technologies and design tools to, to facilitate GPON fiber um, as well as the AXOS platform in order to try to provide a, a stable growth mechanism for the services that we anticipate having to offer over the next five to seven years. In terms of what we're trying to do in future-proofing our network, we're providing a framework to grow the network over the next five to seven years. One of the considerations in moving to AXOS and GPON was what's going to happen with 5G. 5G deployments are going to require very dense configurations of small cells every couple hundred feet in some cases depending on the foliage and the terrain. In order to provide that kind of service at the bandwidths required, we're going to have to be doing NGPON2 or XGSPON and to do that we've got to be on an AXOS platform. So now seemed like the great time to make that switch to AXOS to, to get that under our belt and in the next 12 months we'll be deploying some NGPON to service some existing businesses and layer those networks together instead of having them separate. So all in trying to get prepared for 5G deployment. The obvious question is going to be, so how does a, a small rural carrier play into 5G deployment? We're not a, a cellular provider. We're anticipating continuing to be a, an essential backhaul provider for companies like AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile and Sprint. We do that today as 5G comes to our area, we need to continue to be able to provide that service. It's a valuable uh, stream of revenue for us, as well as we need to be a, have a, a clean pathway for those folks to deploy 5G into our area. We don't want our customers to get left behind on some of the, the really cool things that are going to be enabled with 5G in a rural area. Obviously, we're talking about smart ag agriculture, but also autonomous vehicles in terms of um, logistic support for delivery and receipt of goods to some of the, the manufacturing and distribution concerns in our area. So we, we don't want to get isolated in a low technology environment um, once 5G becomes widely available in, in, in uh, rural areas. Manufacturing and distribution centers absolutely have to have high speed bandwidth that is always on. And so that was one of the motivating factors for us to build out that fiber network. And it continues to be one of the motivating factors for why we're looking at AXOS to provide NGPON services so that we can continue to be able to provide the, the absolute best in bandwidth, whether it's through hardwired connections that we provide or whether we're backhauling for 5G that's coming down the road very quickly.